and I'm just gonna wing it. So welcome to Quantum P's. I'm calling Quantum P's. It's Quantum Perspectives, but I want people to uh, to focus on that P and think, what is he talking about? Is he talking about something? Focus on Exactly. Be careful of the P's. But anyway, welcome. I want to introduce everyone to one of my bestest friends um, who needs no introduction, but I do want to do an introduction anyway. For those who don't know, I want to do, I have dope friends and I want to introduce my amazing friends and my amazing people that I just come in contact with. I just want to be able to let the world know you in some capacity as much as I do, just so they can have a better understanding of who you are. So without any further ado, Lyric L, who are you? And let's talk. What's good? Greetings in the name of the Most High. Hey. You already know. Mm -hmm. This is Lyric, y'all. I who am I? I am a spark of energy, a product of Source. I am Source. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I love it. I love it. And I think we even go further with that. Have you always felt this way? No, uh, I have not always felt that way. And it feels great to feel this way, I must say. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? And as I know, we all have many different transitions, many different journeys. And that's another thing that um, I would like to discuss, not in too much detail, but what it, what is your background? Well, if I was to say, besides your answer, um, for work, or whatever the case may be, what would you categorize yourself as? I categorize myself as an entertainer, first and foremost. All right. First and foremost, an artist entertainer. Mm -hmm. And that's where that energy comes from. I've been able to see it firsthand. Now, did you always have this passion to, to be an artist? Was it always something in you? And when did you know yes, actually. you felt this Yes, way? actually. Because I remember, I, I recall somebody that I went to high school with reminded me that back in the day when I went to high school, we had to cover our books with with the cardboard, the, the paper, you know. Paper the bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good times. And, you know, everybody would always scribble their things in their, on their book. And I used to always draw uh, artists in the microphone. And, you know, like, and you could tell it was a Jamaican artist. You could tell. And it was, was it me? Was it whatever? And, you know, this person reminded me of that. And I was like, yeah, I did almost every book that I, <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's like from back in the day, I just, I don't know, you, you, you start writing these things down, you, you, you think it and boom, here you are doing it. You know, it's, you caused it. Yeah. So, and where does the name come from? Lyric L. Ah, uh, I remember I was on the phone with you when we just, we, one day it was just one of those random conversations, uh, homie to homie, it was like, uh, mm -hmm. if you was a rapper, what would your rap name be? <laughs> mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I, I was Lyric Kill first, Lyric with a K, ill like a plague. And uh, people would call me Kill or Lyric. And uh, I eventually changed it to Lyric L, which in Israel, in, Hebrew of God, everything is El, Israel, yeah. Michael, Gabriel, um, Angel. So, you know, yes. so I kind of feel like my direction in life took a more spiritual tone, feeling more godly. So why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to go back to the whole artist thing, because you are also an artist. Like I know we have had many conversations of what is an artist. Many people don't believe that they are an artist when they actually are. You actually are an artist in many other facets. So what else do you do? Like, do you draw? I know the answer, but let the world know. I mean, your, your drawings are amazing. Your illustrations, you're just an artist in every facet of the work. Thank you for saying that. I feel like I'm rusty. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I mean, they say once you pick up the bicycle again, you don't forget. But I mean, I feel like there's times I, I, I would draw a lot better than I did. I had the privilege when the, the Brass Mill Center, the mall opened up in Waterbury, had like a dozen of my pictures that was up that got selected for the opening. Like there was this big mural. And, you know, That's so awesome. I, I, yeah, I, I, I used to love drawing and it started with the comic books and mm. I used to copy drawing Spider-Man, Wolverine. And, you know, those are my favorite things to do until instead of, you know, 
looking at it all the time. I could just start drawing it in the different poses that I was thinking of in my head. Right. And then, then I would like to start drawing like real objects that were sitting in front of me and seeing how real I could make it. And that's, that's what I used to do. And I, and I remember when I was in uh, Caner, I went to a technical high school. And when I was in my plumbing shop, the drafting teacher would always come into the shop when we was there and he's like, you're in the wrong class, kid. You're in the wrong class. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It, it's kind of hard. This world that we live in, kids are always asked when they're a child, what do you want to be when you grow up? As if there's only one or two choices, you know? And there's so many things that we all are great at. It's kind of hard to narrow it down. So I wouldn't say just because you're exactly. rusty. I would just say you haven't been using it because most of your time has been where? What other part of artistry has most of your time been recently? Oh, in music and acting. Mm. Music and acting. Yes, yes, yes. Any latest projects that you've done? Yeah, <laughs> actually brought down both channels. Been grateful even with all this corona stuff going on. Uh, musically, I feel inspired, first of all. And that spark that has been trickling and landing into some piles of fuel and mm -hmm. and exploding and combusting and new songs collaborations uh videos that have been shot and in the process of being shot um and some other things that are going on not only here but overseas in jamaica nice. i don't even i'm not even going to speak on but hey. we do have the van culture movie Mm -hmm. that is available for streaming on masslife 360com Say it again. Where can they find that? That is the bandculturemovie.com, masslife360. Nice, 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 nice. I know I got the honor to see... Uh, masslife365, sorry. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, no worries. I know I got the honor of seeing clips of your new mu music video that's coming out. Yes, that's Fire. what I'm saying. So, yeah, there's... There's things up my sleeves and it's not lint. Nice. <laughs> well said, well said. As people can see, he, everything he says is lyrical. Like, it's one of those things where I love being able to say to my, to the rest of my peers that I have friends who are lyricists. And you remember what we used to do back in the day. We would go back and forth. We would just write any subject yeah. and... Yeah. You would write, I would write, and we'd be working. So at the time, I was a route salesman for PepsiCo. I'd be in and out of my accounts. I'd come out, like, oh, write something real quick on my phone, send it to you, email, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. And I loved it because we were just training our faculties. Even though we were doing the secular work, we have always been and are just artists. And I feel like art is life. And it's like a, I say, it's a great brain exercise. exercise. Absolutely. It's like it was we'd be like doing uh the freestyle posts on Facebook and be starting whole things. Yes. Yes. And then we have people hit DM me in a low say, you know, you may you may not want to put that up there publicly because people are gonna steal your lyrics. And I was exactly, like Exactly, exactly. Flattery. But now we're in the age where yes, we're definitely more about our business. But back then it's it's sad that we didn't we didn't realize how dope we were, you know, as artists until you know, and it's no shame on anyone else, but it's like Again, we're not taught as children to really see ourselves. We're not really taught to big up ourselves, but especially that's the way why I'm choosing this. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. But that's why I want to take this opportunity now just to let you know. I mean, I tell you all the time, but you're an amazing artist. You're one of the illest lyricists that I know. And I really hey. want the world in so many different capacities to just to get more familiar with you. And I want to say as, as artists, that's one of the things that I love because in order for an artist to stay relevant, I feel that an artist needs to evolve with the times that they're in. Absolutely. I mean, imagine if you still were writing lyrics like you were back in high school. I don't really no think I would be having this conversation right now. No progression, now. exactly. You feel me? So it's like, if you can't evolve, then you die. And I just love that your music hasn't died. I love that your energy has even increased in your music. I love the content and how much just your range. Like, where do you typically get your influence from? Um, what inspires you? And also, I would love to know what are your top artists that inspired you as a child and also currently? I know the answer to those questions very easily. Nice. Uh, let me take the first one. 
what inspires me, I remember when I got a phone call from uh, this musical individual, I won't say his name, in Atlanta, that he was hollering at me to see if I was still doing music. He said, uh, he's like, yo, Lyric, he's like, hey, hey, I just want to make sure you got my number. He's like, are you still doing music? It was a couple of years since I spoke with him. And I was like, I said, I'm alive. I said, I'm breathing, <laughs> life is music. Right, he's right. like, yo, he's like, yeah, I feel that. And at the end of the day, it is because we're we're frequency, we're energy, we're, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And it's just like, we're these wave patterns. It's music, life is music. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I get my inspiration from life. So a lot of times things that I, that I encounter, things I experience, it trickles into it. It's like the seed that starts it and the rest of it is just, either ad-libbed in a sense or just maybe a, a mesh of other people's experiences close to me that you know mm -hmm. whatever but and sometimes it's just fun sometimes it's just sometimes you hear something and and your spirit just doesn't have too much depth to it exactly it's just something that just kind of you vibe with so yeah, yeah all different angles and then the next part of the question as far as uh my influences my top two, I mean, my influences growing up were the three Bs, Beanie Man, Bounty Killer, and Buju. Hey. Um, and of course, I mean, like my father, grew, I grew up with just holy by LPs playing the, the old vinyl and, and just mm. the oldies and this Motown too, you know, not just yes, reggae yes, music, yes, but yes, just yes. all the oldies. My dad had a vast collection. So I just grew up listening to music all the time. And uh and of course, when dance all came out, I was just that grip just grabbed me. Mm. And of course, uh, to my parents' dismay, <laughs> don't be listening to that. Don't be listening. To that. <laughs> so it was it was one of those. Yeah. And of course, then that was around the time of hip hop too. And so, well, after all is said and done, my two top favorite artists is uh, Agent Sasko and Busy Signal. I feel those two are really their versatility that they display. And, and then not only that, but the growth from when I see when they just came out right. versus their their style, their topics to where they are now. And it's ironic how I was just listening to an interview with Assassin and he has a new album called Agent Sasko versus Assassin where nice. he, he has his, his uh, earlier alter ego where he's more like, carefree and whatever and this one which is a little more mature about everything and, and he actually has a song and so they're going back and forth and the, the older one saying yeah you did full of lyrics but you couldn't perform yet and you <laughs> and so, yeah I it's really that. The, the I love that. but that's what i'm saying is like those yeah. two artists they, they think so like like yeah and then they think to make those concepts and stuff like that and like even like with busy signal that the songs that he would sample like he started when i was thinking to myself about just like the whole reggaeton because I hadn't hated reggaeton in the beginning. I remember. I hated it. Man. I was just like, what the fuck is But I'm why like, did you hate it though? You had a reason. It was a valid. Yeah, because I was like, this I was like, reggae is ours. And it's exactly. like you're gonna not even you're taking the name to you're jacking the name. Reggaeton. <laughs> it's like yeah. so I hated on it. Didn't even give it a chance. Didn't even give it a time of day. And one day, you know, I'm just driving and the radio was stuck on just a latin station and i was just forced to listen to it and i was listening to it and i was like yo i was like this is kind of dope it's like <laughs> they took they were saying taking the same drums the yeah. same everything and then just but they would flip it and it was like it was just the, the way that they did it and it's like the quality that they were making it with with as far as you know just everything i was just like wow it was very flattering to see what they did with it and it made me look at my own culture's music and i was like damn how much have we advanced they took it and yeah. kind of was you know what i'm saying yeah. and so that really made me and it's like just thinking to sample certain artists and certain uh, songs busy signal been on that tip as soon as i was thinking doing something and it's like and seeing these big artists making those moves made me be like my mind is in the right place because they're making they're thinking along the same lines i'm thinking so it's just i don't know right. so i like the fact that he, they just sing to all side of the box. And yeah, that, that's it. I love those it. are my two stuff. I love it. I love it. I appreciate those answers. And I think that gives people a, a better insight. 
because we have so many different genres of music. Um, and for those who don't know, like you can do classic reggae with still drums and live instruments. You can do a hip hop beat and rap like Busta. You know what I'm saying? So it's like one of those things where to, to understand your influences and to hear your music and then to know where they come from. If anyone was to listen to just a few of your tracks, they'd be like, ah, I see, I see, I see. And I think that's always dope. It goes hand in hand because I'm sure it's being more widely uh, accepted and known that where the, the connect, the close connection right. that dance hall and, and hip hop have that's coming to the forefront now we're in the age of information. I see how people are bringing attention to the fact that DJ Cool Herc, mm -hmm. you know, Jamaican born, mm -hmm. when he did the whole two turntables and a microphone that he mm -hmm. saw in the streets in Kingston, when in between the sounds changing, they'd flip to the 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 instrumental and mm -hmm. singing about their party, not even singing, but just talking over the beat, talking and rhyming. Yes. And so then, and they're battling back and forth, which song was better and which one was doing the rhymes better and stuff. And he, when he moved up to, to Brooklyn, he took that with him and that turned into those underground basement, bashment stuff, so. Yes, 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 yes. It Thank you for that history boy. lesson. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people understand, like, to your point, reggae artists and hip hop, like they were like hand in hand. Um, any reggae artist would tell you when they talk about their influences and just they all had a hand into it. And I love the fact that you pay homage to that and you always bring it back to the origins, because as we are progressing, as we are evolving, we we can't forget where we came from. Exactly. Then we also know where we're going. That's dope. That's dope. So we know the Ron is here. I don't like to get too much attention to it. Um, not saying that I don't believe in it because I do. It is what it is. We are here. How has performing been under these circumstances? Well, I do live in the craziest state, Florida. <laughs> and you know, Florida don't really do what the rest of the world does. Not this too is big true. Performing. This is true. So I have been able, I've, been, I've had the opportunity to perform. So I, yes, that's a good thing. But I mean, it is Florida. So I don't think it's surprising that parties and stuff have started i'd be seeing i'd be sending like a video to to my brother max and he's like they got people out right now <laughs> he's like <laughs> looking at like yo this shit is locked down still over here <laughs> and i'm like Man, yeah we here though yeah <laughs> i had the pleasure oh, of being out there a couple of weeks ago and i was really shocked at how many people we're, we're out. I'm like, we're, we're everybody masked, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. So, I went to South Beach. It was a, it was a rainy. It was almost it was a cloudy day, so it wasn't like a perfect day to go on the water. But I wanted to go there anyway. Go to South Beach. I got my camera, and I had my mask, and it was hanging down here. Right. So the entrance into the beach. There's a lady that they had people stationed in every entrance, sitting on like little folding chairs. So I'm walking. I got my camera. I'm recording. And I got my mask here. And the lady's like, excuse me, sir, excuse me. I was like, yeah, what's up? And she's like, you need to wear your mask when you enter the beach. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> she's like, you need to wear your mask when you enter the beach. I said, okay. So I put my mask on, whatever. I walk in and people were separated. I mean, it was packed to be, what was it, November? And to be during a, a you know, pandemic. And I'm like, man, there's mad people out here on this beach, right? no mask bro i'm like i'm the only one with a mask i'm like why did i get grilled so i still have my mask on because you know but then i put it down because i want to breathe natural air it was just a different experience and then leaving that on the bikes you know we did the whole bike thing and i gotta be honest with you there really weren't that many people wearing masks and i, I was i was actually kind of shocked i was like wow and it was around the same time that you're hearing the numbers were spiking and I'm yeah like, oh. yeah Sometimes I'm on some my places. My favorite emojis, like, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sometimes I'm on some places and it's like, just to look around and just see, th you see a couple, hear a couple of coughs. And it's like, if I get sick, I think I deserve it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things where, again, I don't want to make light of it. And I just wanted to bring it up because I know 
the whole entertainment industry is different. I mean, we both act so self tapes were becoming to be the norm. And I prefer self tapes, especially when I was living in New York. I mean, you have the option of going to different studios and everything's there within, you know, close proximity. But when you move, let's let's use technology for what it is. So I love the fact that I've been, you know, being able to still submit video submissions. Um, but I will say the acting world has definitely took a pause. Um, people are re, re, redoing again, but it's mainly just the shows, the big ones, the 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 pilot shows. All that has been pushed to 2021, and they still don't know what that looks like. Um, exactly. What do you think about the the movie industry? Do you think movie theaters are going to return? I think this whole COVID thing has made a lot of businesses and everything reconsider because Absolutely. of the fact that reconsider where they can put their money into something that won't fail. I bet you a lot of movie theaters are going to go the route Netflix and stuff is now or put their mm. chips in that bag because they're saying, look it, we can catch everybody at home. Why is it going to, you know what I'm saying? Why are they going to come here? Right. Exactly. And then, and then I feel like, like just a lot of these places that used to have more physical bodies and people in certain places that was like, Hey, we're bringing in certain numbers that we didn't think we could do with this amount of people and it's kind of balancing out a bit, but let's see what we can do here. And you know what I'm saying? And different yeah. kind of figure and also, I mean, I mean, I think it's affected the world in that way. So it truly, truly has. And I think it's affected the world in, in a good way. I know we've had conversations about this in, in the past. I appreciate the pause. Oh yeah. You know, um, I have lost folks, friends and family throughout this. And, you know, while it's sad, the, ir the irony is we all die. And I don't want to make light of that. But when we really think about it, it's going to de derail for a little bit. Like we spend so much time trying to, quote unquote, live forever. When we all know <laughs> that it ain't going to happen. You know, it's just, it's just, it hasn't happened yet. So it's like in my well, mind, in it's like, why do we in this body? Right. So it's like, why do we focus so much on dying? And I think we focus more on dying than we do even focus on living some folks. And I love the fact that you, myself, many others, we try every part of our, <laughs> our being and our existence to to live, you know, to live with no regrets, to live with intention. And to be happy in that process, because at the end of the day, nothing's guaranteed. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. We don't want to focus on yesterday because it doesn't matter. We only want to focus on five minutes ago. I, I remember a meme that said right something now. like, the saddest thing about any cemetery is all those souls that were buried that never lived. Yeah. It just existed. Just existed. You know? Yeah, that was that one. I remember that song with Drake and Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. And when he dropped that line, I'm like, because we've been saying that for years. So to finally hear on mainstream, and I know it resonated with so many people. I just feel like lines like that and just, you know, books, Alan Watts, so many other folks that are helping people or have helped people to just see life for what it can be, what it is. And I, again, I feel like this pause has been able to teach people what life isn't, where people have been able to be like, all right. I don't need to spend that much money on this, or I don't need exactly. that. Or, and they just exactly. started taking control of their life. You're more grateful for what you have in front of you, what you have. Exactly. Present. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. Back. We'll, we'll go back. What do you like doing for fun? For those who don't know, like on, if you weren't working, not doing anything on sets, no music, what do you like to do for fun? Well, if my PlayStation hadn't broken, <laughs> I would say I would kick back into a dose of uh, fantasy world, either Assassin's Creed, either Grand Theft Auto, uh, <laughs> Madden, NBA 2K. Those are my, but yeah, video games. Is... Video games, nice, nice. I know you exercise. <clears throat> Oh yes. Tell absolutely. the world about your, your routine. That's not yeah, I don't consider that fun. That's a habit. Gotcha. What other habits do you have that keep you you? 
Uh, well, speaking of the exercise routine, when I come in from my secular form of passing time. <laughs> exactly. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Is I just uh, do I just do like a ten minute workout, just uh, get the blood flowing a little bit, and the thing is consistency, mm. consistency, consistency. Just like how a water drops, uh, just a drip of water can cut slice through rock. Mm. Just do a little bit of workout. You don't got to kill yourself at the gym, and uh, just remain regular with that, and you'll get you'll reap results. Uh, I do like reading certain things that will spark another brain cell somewhere nice you know what i'm saying another because mm -hmm. it's not infinite things of things you can know and whatever but i do like reading about like ancestry where we came from nice. uh, stuff of that nature things of that many, many other people might not really pay much attention to uh yeah I think that's one of the dope thing about life is that we have so many options. We have so many choices, so many alternatives to where do what you want, you know, choose what you want. You just got to choose. And I love that you choose to enlighten yourself. You choose to fill yourself with other information and then you, you know, decipher and determine what you keep and what you don't keep. Is that exactly. life? You know what I'm saying? Like stuff he's... Remember before, like 15 years ago, I was like, cable is so not necessary. And I was like, the internet's going to do away with, with cable. People are like, oh, you're crazy. Here we are, right? Back in the day, though, remember that time spending more than $100 for like 2,000 channels? And all those channels, and you probably watched maybe 15 of them. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's life. Like, we have so many choices. And there's no one's, like, I'm not faulting anyone for what they choose to do at that time. I just appreciate what you've shared with us. And I feel like, as you've told me, consistency truly is the key. I've been consistent for a week doing my 10, 15 minute workouts in the morning. And I feel great. You know, it just is, it definitely is one of those things where it's no longer even, like you said, a routine. It's just when I get up. I'm brushing your teeth and it's just like yeah, automatic. And when you don't do it, you feel like, fuck, you feel like, Oh man, I got it. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, feel like yeah. you're missing something. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting. I want to add to that because what I've been adding for my mornings is that I'll, before I even get out of bed, um, I've really been working on my internal workouts. So I'll do meditation. Mm. And my meditation also includes prior to it or after just a moment where I like legitly just talk to myself and I tell myself I'll either out loud or my head just how dope I am. And how my day is going to be and how all those things like just mantras, mantras, mantras. And then once I get up, then it's like, all right, internally, I'm good. Check now the physical part. And then mm. I just do that routine and I switch it up because, you know, I get bored quick, but I switch it up. But my main focus is just I do three sets for every muscle group. So buys, tries, chest, shoulders, legs, quads, lats, abs and calf raises and it's been dope because like you see it and we're getting you know we're men of a certain age but it's one of those things where again what is age mm. i see pictures of us when we were younger and i personally feel like we look younger now which is ironic you know i think deep broke we started living. said that we said we, 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 we shed in, shedding our old like a like a, a serpent like a snake. Shedding skin. exactly Deepak, Deepak, is it Deepak? Deepak. He said, technically, man at its peak should be 179 years old. Mm. That's like the hat. I'd like that's like the maximum. And I, I want to say, I want to take take that back. He said the peak was the middle part, so that's like 80 years or 79 years old. That's when you should be at your optimum health. Imagine that. Yeah. At 79, that's when you should be your strongest. Like, imagine that mindset. Yeah. Everyone now thinks that once a person gets older, that their body starts breaking down when the reality is not. Nah. But if we tell ourselves it's going to break down, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Exactly. Mindfulness. <laughs> Mindfulness. Well, that's all I have for this evening, my friend. I just hey. want to be able to again talk to you and let the people also get more familiar with you. If people want to find you anywhere on social media, where should they look? 
you can look under every nook and cranny hey. as long as that nook and cranny says at lyrical which is l y r i k the number 3 instead of e l l y r i k 3 l that's actually lyrical nice, that's where nice, you can nice. find me on facebook as well as instagram and i have to say this say it. and i this goes without saying everything that you've mentioned in regards to my artistry in regards to the talent that i have yada 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 we are mirrors so the things that you saw and see in me we're just reflecting each other's light so and equally as much as you showered me with those compliments and recognized me for who i am likewise i must say that a lot of who i am is nothing without the influence that you've had on my growing up musically uh, character wise and just everything else because we did grow up from a long time ago so you know i just had to go ahead and say that as well so i have to give credit where credit's due oh i appreciate that uh i feel like uh, on my podcast i have way more enough time to talk about myself so <laughs> when i do these you know interviews it's just one of those i would rather the people talk but I do appreciate that. You know, I love you like, like a brother beyond that. Like, that's just, you know, English doesn't do some feelings enough justice. But uh, I do yes, appreciate I your that. words. Do Especially coming from another wordsmith, there's sometimes when there are things that it's like you, you feel handicapped when it comes right? to certain things <laughs> to, to express it. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. That's one of the reasons why I'm really looking forward to learning another language. I remember... Um, my ex-wife, she's Puerto Rican. She would always tell me that certain words, that certain expressions. She's like, man, you, you, I can't translate this into English. But I'm like, well, what does it mean? And she'll say, kind of means this. And I'm like, man, that's dope. But I'm like, why can't that be expressed in English? And you know how I feel about the English um, vernacular. But yeah. If there's a language I want to learn, it's Hebrew. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, get closer Swahili to Swahili for me. Swahili for me. The oldest African language still spoken today. That to me is- uh, Really? Yeah. Yeah, so I bet he, you there's, I bet you some derivative of some Sanskrit and definitely, and, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. They're and all like, very close. Those early, those early languages are all close. So from what I'm, I've researched, just from the expression piece, you know. <laughs> and I feel like, like many signs that we see, I feel like even some tones that I would use while learning this this new language, I feel like that will register many things inside of me that I may not even realize till later on. Uh, but just for my mind, I want to be able to obtain another language, not two, maybe three, but definitely African language, you know, yeah, talk, to, yeah, talk yeah. to our people, talk to our people. But all right, cool. Well, we're definitely going to do this again. Um, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for thank your you contribution to humanity and keep, keep living, bro. Keep living. And I will definitely talk soon. All right. Thank you much. Have a good night. Love you. Peace. Love you, man.